Hi. Today we'll start on chapter four. Chapter four. It's about motion and two and the three. Dimensions. Motion in two and three dimensions. If you remember, we studied motion in chapter two, but the motion we studied was about one dimension. One dimension. Okay? So, what's new in this chapter? We just have to study the motion in a space, two or Three dimensions, three dimensions space. Because objects usually they don't move on straight line. Maybe they move in the space this way or this way, yeah? In X, Y, Z in the space. So what we have to do here is nothing in you except that now I have three dimensions or two dimensions, not one dimension. So what we'll do, we'll repeat what we did in chapter two. Same sequence, but we develop them for Three dimensions, yeah? Now, if you remember, what was the first thing we talked about in motion in chapter two? We talked about if an object moves in a straight line, the first thing, we talked about position, if you remember, yeah? yeah. Position, we said x1, and then probably it moves to x2, position number two, yeah? So position. And at that time, when we said position, the position was either positive or Right, left. What else we talked about? The change in position, displacement, delta x. And again, delta x was either positive or negative. Now in three dimensions, do I have position x1, x2? If an object moves from here to there, what is this position x1? Can you say this is x1 here? No. Because this is in space. X means on the X axis, yes? So we have to redefine position, but for space. I can't just say X1, X2. So we start with position in three dimension. And then once I talk about position, then I have to define displacement in a space. And after that, if you know displacement and you know time, Average velocity, and then an instantaneous velocity, and then average acceleration, instantaneous acceleration. Same. We just have to go back and do those. And then we take the special case of motion, motion with constant acceleration, the three equations of motion. So it's nothing new except that we have to think three dimensions, three. So let's start with position. Because I have, when I say three, of course I'm covering two as well, yes? Just remove one of them. So I start with the three, not with two. Let's say this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis. And I have an object moving in a three dimension. Now, let's say originally the object is here, at this position, position number one. Now, if I ask you to define this position, remember we have two systems of coordinates. We have the Cartesian and the polar in vectors. That's why we studied vectors before this chapter, because we need it. Now, what are the coordinates here? X, Y, and? Because I'm saying point one, so I say X1, Y1, Z1. This is position number one of the object. And let's say this is an airplane or something, and it just flies like, start like that. In the space, moving, three dimension. Now I want to define position in the space. How I defined it here? By using Cartesian, x1, y1, z1. But this system is not helpful. What was the second system? Polar. 
Now this point, this position in polar, what do I need? R and theta, if it's two di dimension, yeah? but three dimension, three, three angles, theta, x, theta, y. Theta. But regardless, here we don't need the theta, just think of the R, yes. So what, what's the polar from zero, zero to the point, yes? Now in polar, we say this is R, and it's a distance. But when we use, use it for motion, we think of it as a vector, vector. So start here, finishes at the point. Because it's a vector now, the R, I put a, a vector sign on it, R vector. And because this vector is position number one, I say R1, okay? So now, how I define this point now? Not by x1, y1, z1, by the vector R1. This vector R, in general, we call it position vector, position vector. So in a space, if you say, what is this position? You can't say it's x1, yes? What do you say? You define it by r. You say vector position one, r1. Practically, what does it mean? If I'm observing something moving, from my point of view, I'm zero, 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 x, y, z. It's like you have a pointer, laser pointer. If I say, what's the position of the projector? r. Send it. A vector to the point, yeah? What's the position of the clock? Point to it, yes? What's the position of that student? The light, yes? So what I do here, I have a point following the object, like a radar. Go with the object, up and down. So this is how you locate an object in a space. By position vector. Now. This is position number one. Now, at time one, what happens to the object? Change position to a new position. Now, let's say it's here. Position number two, all right? Now, Cartesian, this is what? X2, Y2, Z2. Polar, a vector from zero, zero, pointing to the point. And I call it R2 vector, position vector number two. Of course, if the object is here, what you have? Another vector position. So what do you see here? Too many of these, yes? Following the object, pointing to it. The R here, constant or variable? Very well, changes, yes. Sometimes this, sometimes this. So R, position vector, is usually is a function of time. Each time, it has a value. Vector. Right, now, let's write R, the vector R. Any vector has three components. R1, what are the components of R1? Uh, we call it R X R Y R Z, but remember R X means X X one Y one position vector. So R one vector is X one I Y one J Z one K. What about R two second position? X two I Y two J Z2K. So what we did so far, we defined position in a space. Like before, it was X1, X2, now it's what? R1. R1, initial position. R2, final position. Now, if I know the positions, can I find the displacement? The change in position? How? So it means delta R. Delta R, but remember this is a vector. Delta R equal 
I call what? R2, which means you have to subtract R1 from R2. Now substitute. If you put R2 first, minus R1, which means the I with the I, J with the J. So what you will find? X2 minus X1I, Y2 minus Y1J, Z2 minus Z1K, all right? And this is the displacement. This is called? Displacement vector. It's a vector. Before displacement, what was it? Positive or? Negative. But now, it's not positive anymore. Vector. What's the displacement this way? Is it positive? Negative? No. It's a vector. I, J, K. Vector. Now, can you tell me what is X2 minus X1 represents? What is it? Think of in terms of x only. Delta? delta x. Okay, good. And what we define delta x? What's the other? Displacement, which way? Uh, only on the x-axis. Y2 minus y1? Which means displacement in? Y only. And this one. And all of it is displacement where? In a space. So displacement in a space equal to what? An X, Y, Z. Normal. It's a, if it's a vector, it has three images. Three projections. Projection on X, projection on Y. When you put them together, it gives you the total projection. So what is this represents? Displacement vector in a space. Displacement vector. Now, if you have a vector, how do you find its magnitude? What do you do? What's the magnitude here? Square the components, yeah? So the magnitude of delta R is delta X square, delta Y square, Delta Z square under the root. Magnitude. Now let's look here graphically. If this is vector A, because you are familiar with A and B, yes? Think of R1 as vector A. R2 as vector B. And both of them, they start from the same point. When you say A minus B or B minus A, what does that mean? Subtraction, yeah? Of the two vectors. Now, graphically, where is the subtraction? Where is the difference? What do you mean this? You mean from here? The, the head to head. Subtraction is head to head when they start from here. So it's this. Now, where is the initial? Where is the final? So which way you are pointing to the final? Now, I don't have A and B. What do I have? R1 and? So what is the green line? Minus R1. Delta R. This is delta R. <coughs> Vector. And remember, displacement is the shortest distance between two. What's the shortest between this one and this one? Of course, it's the green one. But in vector terms, if you have two vectors starting from the same point, you connect the head to head, it gives you the subtraction. But towards the final. So this is graphically. Good. Now. Look at this equation, displacement. If I divide this equation, both sides, by time, which is t1, t2, delta t, eh? what do I get? Average. Average. 
V average. Now, again, let's start from chapter two first. How we defined average velocity in chapter two? What we said, V average is what? And in, in, in one dimension, V average, delta x over, over delta t, yes? And what was delta x? Either positive or negative or zero. Left, right, or no, okay? So the average velocity was either positive, negative, or zero. That's in one dimension. Here I'm talking about how many dimensions? So do I have positive, negative? What I have to change here to use it for three dimensions? R. R. X is one dimension, but in three dimension. So how I define average velocity? Average velocity is equal to displacement in space, delta R, over delta. And this time, this V average, is it a vector or positive, negative? It's a vector. Vector. Vector, vector. This means this, R2 minus R1, delta R vector. No, no, this is delta, delta, not dr. This is average rate of change, not instantaneous. Average. So what is average velocity? It's the average rate of change of position with average rate of change, yeah? Right. Now. V average is a vector. Why? Because delta R is a vector. Now, when you say R2 minus R1, what do you get? A, a number by I, J, K. So you have here I, J, K. Divided by time, it's still I, J. So what is V average? It has an I, J. So V average as a vector, it has three components. It has V average on X, I. V average on Y. V average on Z. Right? Just normal. Any vector has three components. If the vector is banana, it has three components of banana. Banana on X, banana on Y, banana on Z. If the vector is velocity, it has three components of velocity. If the vector is acceleration, it's three components of acceleration. Right. You might say, how did I get this? Look here. This equation. If I divide both sides by time. Yes? Possible. You divide both sides by time. What does this represent now? Average velocity. Okay. What does delta x over delta t represent? In x only. This one? Average velocity in y only. Average velocity in z only. So, this is the vector average velocity. Of course, this is a vector as well. Now, if you have a vector, how you find the magnitude? Absolute value. So here, V average magnitude, you need to square the component. And this is the magnitude. Now, if you use this one to find the magnitude, this equation. Suppose you have this equation. How do you find the magnitude here? It means the magnitude of V average. Now, the magnitude of this side. Now, you don't need to put the absolute value on time because it's a magnitude, yeah? So you need to find the magnitude of delta r, yes? Okay, now pay attention here. This is one of the common mistakes in math. 
how do you find the magnitude of delta R? What is delta R? What is delta R? Look, R2? OK, one of the common mistakes is this. Students think that the magnitude of delta R means the magnitude of R2 minus magnitude of R1. Wrong. No, no, it's not about square. The magnitude of delta, it's not equal to the magnitude of the individuals. It means R2 vector minus R1 vector gives you a new vector, yes? Then you find this magnitude. The magnitude is the last step, right? So be careful of this mistake. This is a common mistake. Of course, I'm telling you, to be careful. And I, as I promised the other class, I'll bet that in this class, at least one student will do this mistake in one of the quizzes or the exams. I said it, yes? You hear what I said? But let's see who is going to do this mistake. So we don't take the absolute value, right? Sorry? We don't take the absolute value. Well, this is the absolute value, which means the, the magnitude of it, magnitude. What's the magnitude of this? It's not equal to the magnitude of R1 or minus R. For example, negative 4 magnitude. It's always positive. The magnitude is always positive. But how do you find it? It's not like you find the magnitude of the final minus the magnitude of initial. No. You subtract, and then you find the magnitude. Right. Now, what comes after this? An instantaneous velocity. V n. OK. Remember the strategy. We always start from what we know. What we know, velocity in chapter 2. What was the definition of velocity in instantaneous in chapter 2? Yes? The derivative of? The derivatives of average velocity. The derivative of xt function. Xt function. So in one dimension, we said v in instantaneous is the derivative of position with? That's in one dimension. But here, how many dimensions we have? Three, Three dimensions. So what is the definition of velocity in instantaneous? The x dy like derivative of x derivative. Remember, dimensions, one dimension is x, yes? Mm -hmm. But three dimension. So with y and with z. Means x, y, and? X, y, z means what? R. R. Your function is? Remember RT function? So in a three dimension, V in instantaneous equal dr over dt. OK? dr over dt. But look here. x in chapter 2 is either positive, negative, yes, or 0. r. It's not positive, negative. It's what? Vector. So this is the difference here. You have to do derivatives for a vector. What you learned so far, to do derivatives for a function, which is not a vector, yeah? You know, but here it's the same, same rules. Here you have to derive the vector r, OK? Now, I'll give you an example, but just before that, let me Continue here, and then I'll give you an example. What does it mean? So this is what it means. Derivative. Sorry. We have to put velocity Of course, yeah. Good. Okay. You see the difference? This was positive, negative. This was positive, 
But here, this is a vector. This must be. So the answer here is a vector. Right. Where did we get this or this? From calculus 1. Now, if you have an average function, how do you find the instantaneous function? What do you do? If you have an, uh, is this an average or an instantaneous? Average. average. Now, if you have an average function, mathematically, how do you change it to an instantaneous function? What's that? I, I explained this before. We take the limit. The limit of an average becomes what? Instantaneous definition. So this is, where did I get this from? Look, you start from this, start from here. V average equal delta R over, this is average function, yeah? I want to change it to instantaneous function. So I take the limit of both sides, limit delta T approaches zero, and here limit delta T approaches zero. Now, probably I mentioned this before as well, but I just remind you again. Not just in physics, in all branches of science, whenever you have an average function, what's the average function? Could be average velocity, average acceleration. In engineering, in general, average function. How do you change the average function to an instantaneous function? You take the limit of it, yeah? Becomes? So now this side now becomes what? V instantaneous. Right, now look on this side. What is delta R over delta T? Average rate of, of a function. But what is the function here is R. Again, general, general, not in physics, general. Whenever you have an average rate of change of a function, how do you change it to an instantaneous? You take the limit of the average, yes? Becomes instantaneous. Now, average rate of change, when it changes to instantaneous, it means, what's the other name for it? Derivative. So all this becomes dr dt. That's why we say velocity is derivatives of position with? From the definition, yeah? This is just some mathematical. It's not like physics, but something to remind you where the derivatives comes from. So generally speaking, average function can be changed to an instantaneous function by taking the limits when delta t approaches zero and becomes that. OK. Now, if you have the vector, you can find its magnitude as well, yeah? OK. Now, when I find dr dt, what's the answer? Vector or a scalar? So it means v instantaneous has this form. v in x i, v y j, v z, k. Look, I didn't put instantaneous in this because there is no need. When we don't put instantaneous, we mean instantaneous. So instantaneous in x, instantaneous in y, instantaneous in z. What's the magnitude of v? Square root x plus vy dz squared. This is the magnitude. All right? When I say the magnitude of velocity, what does that mean? What's the other word? In chapter two. Speed. Before, what we define the speed? No, not average speed. Be careful. Speed, instantaneous. We said instantaneous speed is equal to the absolute value of instantaneous velocity. So here we can say what's the speed or what's the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. Same. What next? And? But probably forgot something. Average speed. 
Why I, we didn't talk about average speed? How do you find average speed? What is average speed equal to? Average speed is distance over time. Now, look here. When the object moves from this point to this point, where is the distance? It's the path, yeah? Is it easy to calculate this? From outside, it's hard. But if you are inside this, maybe it's an airplane, yes, you can tell how many kilometers you moved, yeah? So you'll find that in this chapter, we don't ask what is the average speed because it's a trivial question. You just have to know what's the length divided by the time taken, yeah? But in chapter two, it was important because you were moving on straight line, yes? So how did you find the distance? First, you found the turning points, yeah? And then from one point to another, from the turning to another, and you use absolute value. Here, we don't have turning point, look. It's not about turning point, it's about that you are not moving on straight line, the path is the distance. So what is next now? Average, so I'll change this title. Average acceleration, A, average, again. What is the definition of average acceleration in chapter two? Motion in one dimension. Delta velocity over delta. Okay, now quickly. Delta V, what does it represent? Final velocity over delta T. Eh? So before, velocity was either positive or V1, positive or negative. V2, positive or, and when you subtract them, the answer could be positive, which means the acceleration average was either positive, left or right, left or right. In this chapter, I have acceleration, yes, average, but do I have left or right? No, three dimensions. So now I have to redefine this for three dimensions, yes? From the definition, what is average acceleration equal to? We said delta V over, but what's the difference now? I don't have right and left, I have delta V vector, which means average velocity becomes what? A vector as well, yeah? Okay, if this is a vector, it means final velocity vector minus initial velocity vector over delta t. A average vector. So when you do this, what do you expect? What's the answer here? Vector, i, j, k, components, yes? So this is a vector which means you'll have this answer, V average. It's an average in X, I, average in Y, and average on Z, on K. What's the magnitude? Root average X squared. Average y, average z, but I don't need that. This is magnitude. Magnitude. Now, before we go to the second one, which was, what is it? Instantaneous. Let's go back to the question here, which I said I'll explain it. How do you find instantaneous velocity? 
What do you need to do? Derivatives of R, which means what you'll have, you'll have, you say, the position as a function of time for an object moving, it's this, 3 t square i minus 4 t j plus k. What does this represent? What's the name? Position vector, r. This is describing, let's say it's describe this object which moves. Is R constant or variable here? Variable, depends on the time. So at one second, you have this vector. At two seconds, you have another vector. Not magnitude, vectors. When you put, when you put one here, what you'll have? Three I, four J plus K. This is the R vector R1. In two seconds, this vector will change because it's pointing to another direction. So it's a function of time. Okay, what's the question here? What's the speed of this object, or what's the velocity first, at one second? Derive. Derive it. So you say velocity instantaneous, which is a vector, is the derivatives of our function with time, yeah? Derive. Be careful, when you derive a, a vector, don't remove the ij. Six what? I. No, zero because you have one multiply zero. Yeah, so there's no k. So this is the what? The velocity vector at any time. At any time. Now, if I say what's the velocity at one second? It becomes six i. Be careful here. In this chapter, always think vectors. What we found here? Vector of velocity. Now the question is, what is the speed at one? Speed is the magnitude of velocity. So it means. The value, what's the value of this vector? Six square plus four square. And it gives you the value, yeah? 36 and 16, yeah? I put that, sorry, I'm sorry. No, this was, not, this was at t equal one, just this one side. At equal one. Vector. This is the vector. You got it? When you say magnitude, it means the magnitude of the vector. Now, let's use this one here. Okay? What I, what I say here? Vector. Now, if I want the magnitude here, what do I do? I need the magnitude of average acceleration, which means I have to find the magnitude of delta V over, there's no need for that. How do you find the magnitude of this? The common mistake. Don't do this. It's not you go and find the magnitude of the velocity two, and you subtract it from the magnitude of velocity one. It's wrong. This is wrong, no. It means velocity two vector minus velocity one vector, you have a new vector. What's the name of the new vector? Delta V, then you find its magnitude. Okay, so I don't want this silly mistake. I said it twice. So you need to say it another time? Right, so this is, okay. What about this? If you have this one, of course it's easy, yeah? Your square root of the component. Now what is last, instantaneous? Acceleration.
an instantaneous acceleration. Again, chapter two, what was the definition of an instantaneous acceleration in chapter two? Derivative of velocity with time. But at that time, V was either positive, here, it's a vector. No, you just have to put V vector. And this will be a vector as well. And what does this mean? Take the derivative of velocity with All right. Do I have to repeat what, how we find an instantaneous? You go to take the limit of both sides. This side, limit of an average and limit of a rate of change derivative. Let me finish. Okay, now you might say how I use this. How you use it. Look here, when I did the question of velocity, what you have to do uh, what you have to have first, a velocity function, yes? Which is a vector. And what you do to it? It gives you the acceleration. So if I start, because I are, it's the same question, but what you have to do, you have to do two derivatives. One is velocity, another one is? So start here. This is V. So you have V as a function of time, but it's a vector. And in this case, what is my vector? I prefer to start with a new one because this is not. Let's take one. Let's say I have uh, 3t cube i minus 2j plus uh, tk. Now, what's the question? Find the acceleration at t equal one second. So, what you have to do? A vector is dv vector over derivatives, yeah? 9 what? 9t square i. Zero. This is constant, zero, no j. Plus k. So what do I have now? Acceleration vector. What's the acceleration vector at t1? 9 by 1i plus k. 9i plus k. Okay, what's the next question? What's the magnitude of the acceleration at one second? Square root. 9 square plus 1 square, yeah? So it's 82, root of 82 meter per second. Square. Right. This way we finish all. So what we did so far, we just repeated everything and we thought of it as a vector. And instead of a plus and i, j, k, same definition. Now what was the special case we had in chapter two? Motion with constant. Okay, so I'll put the title here. Now, please here pay attention to the word uh, constant acceleration. What does it mean acceleration is constant? We'll, we'll stop in five minutes. Let's now. What does it mean constant acceleration? It means the acceleration has one value. Before, in chapter two, acceleration could be minus seven meter per second or plus four. 
This is in how many dimensions? Okay. Now, in this chapter, when I say that acceleration is constant, what does it mean? It means acceleration is minus 7 plus 3. What does it mean minus? Left plus? But in space, do I have left or right? No. So I have to know what does it mean constant acceleration in space. Now, to know, to discover the meaning, I'll give you two examples. You tell me which one is constant acceleration. Is the acceleration in this chapter, it's a vector or a scalar? And it has i, j? Okay, now, there is an acceleration equal to 2t square i minus 7j plus 4k. This is an acceleration vector, yeah? And there is another one. What is this acceleration? Constant or variable? Variable. Why? Depends on time, but this one? So now you know how to know if the acceleration is called? It doesn't depend on time. It's a vector, i, j, k, but it doesn't have time function. So this is a variable, but this one? Constant acceleration. Which means, if you have a problem and you want to know if the acceleration is constant or variable, look at the vector of acceleration. If it doesn't depend on time, it's a constant. Right. Now, I know my object moves with a constant, yeah? Acceleration. So I remove this one. Chapter 2, we had three equations of motion for constant acceleration. What they were? What was the first equation? Final velocity, initial velocity plus acceleration time. Second, final velocity, initial velocity square plus 2, delta x, delta x, v1t, yeah? one dimension. And at that time, what was v1? Either positive, negative. Acceleration, positive, negative. So v2, positive or displacement, positive, negative. Now in this chapter, I have to adjust now, yes? So the first one, if I want to use it for space, three dimension, it's the same equation, but I have to adjust it. Initial velocity is V1, yes? From now on, in this chapter, we don't call it V1, we call it V0, starting, yeah? Is it positive, negative, or something else? You just have to put vector. I, J, K. Plus, what is the next term? Acceleration. Before it was positive, negative. Here, vector acceleration, time. And what is this? Final velocity, and it's a vector. This is the difference. So you put vectors. Now let's go to the second one. Initial velocity, Vector, what you did to it? Square it. Two, acceleration, vector. What is next? Be careful. Delta what? Delta R, not delta X. Displacement in space, and it's a vector. And here, V final vector, square. Third one. Delta R. Delta R, well done, vector. V naught vector T plus half A vector T square. All right. Now, when you have equation in math, it means the two sides are equal. Equal in what? In magnitude, yes? That's in algebra. But in math in general, I'll, I'll finish with this sentence and we'll continue. When you have equation, it means the both sides are equal in everything, not just the ma value. They are equal in their properties as well. So the properties on the left must equal the properties on the right. I'll just give you this example here. What is V naught, vector or a scalar? Vector. 
Okay. Acceleration. Time. Now, vector multiplied by scalar. So this is a vector. And this is vector plus vector. So this side is? Is this side a vector? Yes. Balanced. This one. Vector, scalar, vector. Vector, scalar, vector plus vector. So this side is? This one is the tricky one. We leave it for the next class, yes? I'll start with this one. Thank you. So now we start there.